If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay, um, so we we'll look at uh, the you know whatever the pending assignments we have uh, later in the class, later in the later when we move to the section. But I want to get started with uh, the actual cal fields and uh, the working of them. Mm -hmm. um, and in today's session, we'll be basically going through two types of calculated fields. So we have seen yesterday that there are cert there are different functions that we can do with calculated fields, including uh, you know date manipulations, text formattings, you know all the other stuff. So today we'll be different. We'll be going a deep dive into what uh, what are those functions and how we can manipulate the data. So a uh, little disclaimer before we move ahead. And this is the agenda for the day. So we'll be, we have looked at the two type of calculated fields yesterday, global and uh, report specific. So uh, the global ones are, which are available, you know, tenant wide, not specific to a report and the report specific ones are the one which can only be used as part of the report they are defined into. Uh, the second topic will be numeric constants. So there will be all will be requirement for you to create constant values uh, as part of your uh, reporting needs. So if I have to bring out a value, let's say 34 every time in front of an employee, right? So I need to first create a constant, numeric constant to basically put it up as part of my reporting. So we'll look into how we create the numeric constants. Um, then there's increment or decrement date. Um, we have talked about this yesterday about um, if I have a requirement to find out uh, a person's birth date minus one. So these type of calculations can be done using the increment or decrement date functionality where you can basically uh, manipulate the existing workday uh, date fields and you can either add to those dates or you can decrease to those dates as well so we can do all sort of functions on that then there is date difference so uh, this is uh, going to be an a field which will basically uh, gives you the difference between two dates so as the name suggests right so it it, it takes in a date one and then it takes a date two so uh, if let's say I have a requirement to figure out what is the current tenure of the person uh, of one particular employer, right? So that the date one can be the current date, the the you know the the date we are in, uh, minus the date of the hire, right? The hire date. So that will give you the tenure of that particular employer. And there is more to it about how do you want to reflect? Do you want to reflect in days, months, or years, or how do you want to reflect it? So that functionality we also see while uh, we we look at date difference. Uh, then there is substring text is is uh, pretty straightforward. If I want to capture only first three letters or let's say first four letters of a particular text, then I can define those start points and end points that I want to start. Uh, look, you know, fetching a value with starts at point zero or point one, and then ends at point four. So I'll be able to substring it uh, based on the requirement I have. Then there is text length. Text length is um, uh, if I have a requirement to basically figure out uh, that uh, uh, the last name cannot be more than 10, 10, 10 characters long right so i have to pull out all the employees which have a, a last name greater than 10 characters so the text length will basically uh, help me recognize which are those uh, texts or which are those fields which have a particular last name greater than 10 so these are the fields that we'll cover today. Uh, and uh, you'll normally find this being used uh, as part of your day-to-day -day activities, day-to-day reporting needs. 
and uh, to start with uh, there is a uh, uh, so we have seen yesterday that uh, uh, every particular uh, calculated field is associated with a business object right so once you do a create calculated field there are three things which are asked one is uh, the name of the field the second one is the business object and the third one is the function that it associates with right so the second field right i'm very specific about the second field called known as uh, the business object so as as we have been talking about it every calculated field currently is uh, needs to have a business object attached to it and business object basically defines that what type of data that will be extracted out once you do any kind of manipulations to it whereas there are certain fields which are not associated with any of the business objects and we call them as a global business object so uh the global business objects are you know as the name suggests are global in nature uh and it can be both it can be the word delivered fields or it can be the calculated fields uh the good thing about the global business object is it it doesn't is it's not restricted uh with any other business object right so what it means is if i am building a report with a data so primary data source being a worker right i'll still have fun- the flexibility to pull calculated fields with global business object associated with them if let's say i'm creating a calculate a report with on expense reports i can't pull uh, data from worker business object but i will always be able to pull uh, fields which are gl- which are associated with global business objects so as the name suggests the global business objects are available for any business objects and are visible to all users uh so normally uh what type of fields are global calculated fields so the fields that can be not specific to any particular business object so values like 1 23 a single space something called as is true or the currency called usd right uh these kind of uh, fields are not specific to any of the business objects i am so a value of 23 right it's not uh telling me that this has to be associated with a worker or it has to be associated with an expense it just tells me that it's 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 a constant value of 23 so we can put this into a bucket of global business calculated field so that it can be used by uh reports which are specific to any of the business objects being worker expense financials or anything right so when you create a global calculated field uh, you have to uh, make sure you have to basically uh, uh, see why we are creating it uh, what is uh, can is it very generic uh, in a way where the values that i will that this particular field will give can be used tenant wide with any of the other field so uh this this should be the you know uh thought in your mind when you create fields like that so i'll, I'll just go and uh, i'll just run through uh, the same thing in the tenant and i'll just show you how does it look like when how does it basically the cal fields uh created in global space will look like so if i'll go to a task right the create calculated field it gives me the three things again i'm going to give uh, a uh, field name called let's say uh numeric constant or maybe text constant okay yeah. text constant uh jt okay let's say this and now it asks me for business object so i can have you know too many business objects to choose from but since i'm creating a text constant right i will be uh looking at the global business object so this here you see the global business object if i'll choose this one right now i make uh, basically indicating that the text constant field that i'm creating can be used with any of the business objects it's not specific to one 
of the business object. It can be associated with anyone. And what function I'm looking at? I'm looking at text constant. So if we'll scroll down, here it is, the text constant. And so, you know, I'll create a constant called, let's say today. I click OK. So I've just created one business object, one calculated field called text constant JT with a business object being global. You will see uh, that when I run, when I, when I try to create reports and try and pull this field, this particular field will be available to pull in any of the reports, regardless of what data source I'm taking, uh, what primary business subjects I'm working with. So that's the advantage of having a global business object that it doesn't tie back to any uh, business objects. Okay. So uh, the second type of uh, new calculated fields I wanna talk about is the numeric constants. Uh, just like what we have seen with text constants here, uh, the numeric constants uh, uh, function is used to basically uh, assign a numeric value to a calculated field. This particular calculated field and this particular constant value can be a positive numeric value and can be a negative numeric value as well. It can be something with the decimals and uh, uh, it can be without decimals again. It, it, is, it is solely depends on what requirements do I have. Uh, numeric constants are uh, uh, normally uh, built out of the global business objects because they see numeric values uh, doesn't tie back to anything, right? I can use one as part of I mean, anything, right? I can I can use it as part of my reporting that I'm doing for workers. It can tie back to uh, a condition rule that I'm making uh, for a business process. So it doesn't tie back to any of the uh, business objects, right? So normally when you create a numeric constant, it, 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 it basically uh, have a global business object being used. Uh, to, to just run you through this, uh, if you go to the create calculated field again, uh, if I, let's say, if I want to create a numeric constant, of 5,000, so, and I'll take the business object being global again, again, the same reason, because the numeric constant value of 5,000 can be used anywhere, not specific to a particular uh, business object. And now we are looking at numeric constant, the function called numeric constant. Yeah. So this numeric constant will assign a value of 5,000, but it could be anything, right? Based on your requirements, if I have to show minus thousand or minus ten thousand point zero zero one and anything. So this will basically uh, hold the value that will provide as part of this particular text area. And once I click OK, uh, you have a new calculated field created with the numeric value of five thousand. And uh, uh, this is un created off the global business object, so it will be readily available to be picked by any of the data sources. Okay. Um, moving on to the next one, it's the increment or decrement date. Um, the increment or decrement date uh, is normally used to basically uh, add or subtract to a existing date value. So, you know, one of the examples that we are talking about yesterday as well is, is about uh, the birth date of a user. But another example could be the hire date of the user. If I have to uh, notify my manager that, uh, you know, the manager comes up with a business case saying, give me a list of all users who have completed one plus years 
in the current organization. So this is how this particular field we can use where we can use a source being the higher date. And then uh, we can basically add an years as well to it to see, uh, you know, who are the ones that have basically been above one year or below one year. Other example could be uh, uh, if, if uh, I have to set a validity, right? You know, the one example that I'm seeing is the credit verification renewal date. So every uh, employee has a credit verification renewal date one year post their original verification date. So they have to renew their verification after every year or after one year. So you can take the source field being the credit verification date, add one year to it, and then you will find that uh, it will give you the value uh, of the next year uh, as, as needed. Uh, We'll see it in action. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll stick to the, so now this can't be global, right? This is very specific because the date fields are tied to a particular business objects. If I'm talking about birth date, it's tied back to uh, the workers, right? Uh, so uh, here we have to take the business object being a worker. Field name will be, uh, you know, being very specific. Um, and I think this should be a good habit to start as well. Uh, our calculated fields names should be well defined so that once you or you or somebody else tries and uses the fields, they'll be able to gather all the information as part of the field name itself. So normally what uh, I recommend is to define the type of field it is. So we are using as date increment, right? You can maybe use a short form as well if needed. Uh, date increment decrement and then uh, what does it tell you it so we are looking at birth date minus one let's let's do that okay so the comment is will we are doing a date increment decrement and we are trying to fetch the birth date of a user minus the one date Okay, so what function we'll be using? Using we'll be using uh, increment or decrement date. Okay, so moving on to the field, this is the source field, uh, and uh, as per the business case, we have to find out the birth date minus one date of the user. So in here, we'll try and search for birth date let's see what comes up okay it says date of birth i look very quickly look it up it's a constant field date constant i don't want that i look at the second one it's called date of birth worker this is the work delivered field okay so the you know you you don't have so you see the the bad thing is if you look at it you will be like uh, this is the one right you can't just tell it but you have to go deep into it and see which is the one which is delivered by workday. So whenever it says report field, that's what it is delivered by workday, then you, it's always tied back to a business object as well. Uh, when it's a uh, calculated field, it is always going to be calculated field and the type of field it is. So we'll be taking the second one because that's the one we need. We don't want a text concept. We want the original date of birth that is extracted out of the business object of worker. So I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to add a subtract years? No. Do you want to add a subtract months? No. Do you want to add a subtract days? Yes, that's what I need, right? So what do I need to do? I need to minus one to it. So I'll just quickly search minus one here. And here you go. You have a report field, global in nature. And it, it's a numeric constant minus one. Yeah, that's what I need. So I'll click, click here. The last option of return blank data on error. Why is it there, right? So let's say a particular employee when entered in workday doesn't have a date of birth at all, right? It's not entered. So this particular field value is literally empty for him. So when you do a calculation from an empty field and you'll try to minus one to an empty field, 
it's going to throw us an error on the report and you don't want that so we'll check this saying that if it's an error return me uh, a blank data don't return me an error because error will basically stop the process and it will not allow the report to even run so we should check this so that uh, if it runs into error then you know it just throws in a blank value cool so we have created a a calculated field called date increment decrement birth date minus 1 it takes the source field as date of birth and then what we are doing is we are decrement 1 to it and also we will be uh, making sure that it doesn't run into errors if it's a blank date of birth for a few employees so we'll check this to see this in action i'll i'll go back to the report that we created yesterday uh the good way to look at the report is use this task called view custom reports and uh, we created this report called test report yesterday what was it uh okay no this is not it no worries i'll just use this one report particularly for now and i'll just tell you how uh it particular field looks like okay so question if i may um uh, is it not better not to check off that error thing so it actually shows an error right one could expect date of birth there for instance is it not like you you expect everyone to have a birth date and if it's not there is it not better to have it not checked so the system shows it's an actual error thank you yeah so two business business scenarios here um a error will stop the report to run okay it will just give you a whole prompt saying that we can't run this report because there is an error on it right um it doesn't specifically tell you that this is the report this is the worker which has an error uh so if you if you don't if you uh, if you let's say don't check that uh, particular field you'll not be able to run your reports saying that there could be a business scenario where they want that do not run a report or do not run output may anything if the worker doesn't have update of birth so that's if you're specifically talking about that scenario yes but if the let's say there are 5000 employees and 10 of them are missing date of birth then your report will not give an output for any of them and we don't want that we want the report to give us output and uh, you know throw in blank values for people who doesn't have a date of birth so coming from that it could be a you know it could be a scenario where it's it is being asked explicitly to throw an error when there the value is blank but normally if it's not asked we'll keep it that checked so that uh, our report is doesn't run into errors thank I you very much I, yeah, thank you yeah. okay um i'll quickly remove the other fields and i'll be very specific to the one that we created so i'll take the worker here and uh, i'll take the one that i'll take the original value of date of birth so that we can really see in action how the, the increment decrement thing works okay again we'll yeah this is the one we need we don't want the text con the calculated field we want this one okay and now we'll take the one that we created so i'll use the shortcuts uh, the, the first three letters to really look at our fields it's called date increment decrement and uh, birth date right yeah let's see there you go 
This is the one that we created, right? Date increment, decrement, birth date minus one. I'll go to sort, I'll go to filter, nothing in here. Perfect, I'll click okay. Oh, this report is already in the back date. Okay, we can't use this one. It's it's already past the date. I'm not sure why it's not it's still here. Uh, cool. I'll really quickly create another one. Hmm. I'm taking yes, so the workflow for SCM reporting. This is the most generic one, which is full data of worker. So yeah, I have the worker. I'll be pulling the date of birth. Yep, and then we'll be looking at the one that we created. Comment date. Yeah, this is the one, okay. This is sad, this is filter, okay. I'm gonna run it very quickly. So there are four, six, five, nine items that I've received. That means we have four, six, five, nine employees currently in the system. So this, you see, this, these are all the employees without a date of birth currently. Even then the system hasn't run into the errors. So uh, from a functional perspective, I'm, I'm expecting that they might not have a date of birth entered as well. Uh, But I'm not gonna sort it to see do we really have values of date of birth here or not. So here you go. Even though we have a lot of employees without a date of birth, the report still ran and it gave us the blank date side. It doesn't reflect anything. But as you'll see here, right? For Betty Betty, the date of birth is this one, but our Cal field is giving the day one day prior to what's our actual date of birth is. <clears throat> and we can use this report further to basically notify their managers regarding their birth, date of birth, right? One business case that I'm talking about. But yeah, you can, you can create several other calculated fields based on this where you increment and decrement based on the source field and then get you know reflected as part of your reporting. Um, Moving on to the next state, next uh, field type is, is the date difference. The date difference field is, is uh, when you are uh, looking at a difference between two date types. So one example that uh, we have is, if I am looking at the tenure of an employee and I want this tenure to be reflected in, let's say number of days, so I can, I can use the date difference function where uh, I'll have two fields. One is the start date field. And another one is the end date field. So start date, I can have something called as uh, uh, the higher date, let's say. And the end date field could be the current date, right? And what I want, I want the value to be returned in days. <clears throat> so if I'll choose in days, I'll get the tenure of this employee in the current organization in number of days. Um, and you can, you, can, you can basically have it reflected in the way you want. In years, in days, in minutes, anything. So um, based on your requirements, you can basically extract out uh, the difference between two dates 
and uh, we'll be using those values as part of our reporting and the business condition rules so uh, when we move forward uh, again to see this in action we'll will will create a quickly a uh, you know the business case that we discussed you go to a task called create calculated field i'm opening up a new uh, new tab um, you know again i'm going to give it a name of uh, what is it it's uh, a dead difference so i'll call it dd i'll put uh, saying the tenure in days let's say right tenure is tied up to a worker so the business object here will be also the worker and what function i'm looking at i'm looking at the difference okay so the start date will be we are looking at when the employee is hired because a tenure can only be from the date of hiring till the current date so i am using the hire date it could also you know <clears throat> so let's say if the requirements if is um, tell me the tenure of the employees who have spent two plus years in the current organization so here i'll be using the termination date on right because <clears throat> termination date uh, because now the requirement has changed to uh, give me employees which have spent two plus years in the current organization before they left us so if the requirements are very specific to that then we'll be using the end date as the termination date uh, the current scenario is uh, for all the active employees give me a list of uh, Uh, give me the list of you know the tenure they are ha- they are actually in so what are, what is the how many days they have spent uh from the date of hiring so what i'll take here is um, the current date let's see okay so we have a lot of fields okay a lot of fields created um but i think this is the one that that will work current effective date and time what it does is returns the effective and date and time that is used when the report field is evaluated right this is what we need we we want whenever we run the report extract out the effect current date and pull it okay this this is i think this works perfectly for me so hire date is being the start date and the end date being the current effective date which is the current date the today's date i think i can even take today here uh so yeah today is i can take today as well Returns today is based on the current date where the user is looking. I think this this is something we can take as well. I mean, either of them will will work uh, the same way, but you can take as per your need or whatever comes in you know in top of your mind that particular time while you're creating it. Um, the tenure in days, right? So we will check in days. I'll also recommend again to check this because let's say if employee doesn't have a higher date. Uh, you know could be anything it could be a data entry issue and the hire date is not entered for that worker because today will always exist it's could be the only one field that could uh, error out right being the hire date so we don't want again don't want the report to run into errors so checking this will only help us uh, not having the report go into errors moving forward so here is our field i'll add it as part of uh, our report that we created and we'll see it in action for employees okay uh i'll quickly add it here. okay i'm going to add it here i'm going to also add their hire date so that you know we can see how it looks like I'm adding the hire date. I'm going to also add the other field called today. It's going to be same for everyone, but I'm just adding it. Cool. Uh, I can give you a heading over here. It says tenure in days. And let's see. I'm going to run it. 
without a prompt, let's see. So here you have it, right? Uh, you have all these employees with a higher rate with today's date and what is the tenure as of now? So I think it looks like when the tenant is set up, most of them, the same higher rate of 7, 7, 2022, uh, but sorry, higher rate of 1, 1, 2000. But uh, uh, if I have to really see if there are other people, I can pretty much do it this way. Let's see. I'm 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 trying to pull employees which have a higher rate after one one two thousand, so that we can actually see other employees or how the data is being pulled up for them. So you know, uh, these are the other employees with a higher rate of two one two thousand eight. So the days they have spent is five to seven years so far. Uh, other employees is hired in 2012. They have spent three one, three seven one three days so far. So this is how you can basically extract out um, the number of days, and the day difference field will be used a lot uh, when you uh, run into project uh, scenarios of uh, creating some report fields. You know, uh, finding out the expenses, uh, the difference between the expense entered an expense approved. So you'll have a very different scenarios when it uh, when when we'll come down to it. Um, another another uh, function that we will be talking about is a substring text. Um, I have seen mostly with um, reporting needs where uh, the requirement is not to send out, uh, you know, name field greater than five characters, let's say 10 characters, right? And it's very specific because uh, they use the report output uh, to be you know, manually fed in the other system. So, and the other system doesn't have the capacity to hold you know, values of characters greater than 10 digits. So when you have specific requirements regarding that, uh, if let's say the text is greater than 10 digits, delete the text which is after 10 characters right only i need the first 10 characters uh and you will have a lot of other business scenarios uh where uh, uh you will have text field you know by address is one great example we'll have you know address being uh, uh used uh, address being entered you know in 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 any form of length so a user is entering 50 characters as part of their address so 50 characters as part of the address will only create a lot of significant issues uh, because 50 characters as a whole uh, cannot be, uh, will only increase our data. And we, we, we only want the, let's say, uh, the first uh, 20 characters to be displayed and we don't want the other ones. So while we have business scenarios like this, that's when uh, the substring text comes into play. Um, again, to run into it, uh, we'll, we'll quickly create one uh, create, uh, calculated field. Uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to substring text, or let's say the address. Address is tied to again the worker. So we'll take the worker. And the function we are trying to do is um, substring. I'll just type it here. Substring text, I'll click OK. So when you come here, right, there are four fields which we are looking at. And, and uh, I would like you to please uh, concentrate uh, on this because this is where it will get a little confusing. Text field is the source field, right? I am looking at the address of the user. So address, uh, what address I need? I'll, I'll take uh, the full address, let's say, right? I'll see what it is. It's a cal field, we don't want it. It's a calculator again, okay. We don't want this as well. Uh, what else? 
okay primary home address this is the delivered one yeah the primary home address works so i'm now pulling the primary home address of the user and i'm trying and the requirement is to only fetch the first 10 correct or 10 you know uh uh, uh only 10 particular words and then you know just neglect everything else so if you go to the substring type there are different types that you'll see here after a delimiter before a delimiter between two delimiters and fixed position what do we mean by these okay so i'll if you look at this table uh, you'll see that uh, this is the value that we are receiving as part of the source field abc hyphen xyz so i want that pull out the value before hyphen wherever it could be anything right it could be one two three hyphen three five five or it could be anything right name hyphen something right the requirement is pull out the value which is before the hyphen so what i will define here is before a delimiter hyphen and this is the original text the value that i'll get is abc uh, now i'm defining another high uh, delimiter called bc so anything which is there before bc will be pulled so in this case you'll see a being pulled up uh, so you'll have you'll see a here uh, another scenario could be uh, a slash where i want the value before the slash to be pulled out always so as part of date fields, the first slash that you'll receive, right? The date before it, whatever the value, numeric value, which will be there before it will be fetched. After the delimiter examples will work the other way. Uh, please note, we are also looking at the direction being forward. So the direction being forward is we are moving from left to right while we do our calculations. So we are always moving from left to right. We are doing our calculations. If I'll take the direction being backward here, right? If I'll take it backward, the whole scenario will start from right to left. Now, if I'll take this as backward, and if I do ABC hyphen XYZ, and now it's the direction is backward, right? The value that I'll get here is XYZ, not ABC. I hope, hope you understand. Uh, so that way we can actually define the specific needs of it uh so the the after delimiter works in a way where abc hyphen xyz i'm defining delimiter being after delimiter being bc so any value which is after bc will be pulled over so we have hyphen xyz after bc so we'll, we are put, putting it here now it says pull the values after w we don't have w as part of this text right the original text so it will not return anything um, after slash, it will return um, zero four. So that's how you can use this for a particular business scenarios. Uh, another one is between. Uh, so the you know it, these whatever we have seen so far is the forward direction things. The backward direction, as I said, is when we are moving from right to left now. So if you're, I'm taking, I'm looking at the example of after delimiter but I'm now moving in the backward direction, right? So hyphen, I'm moving from right to left, and this is after delimiter. So I am moving from right to left. Here I find the hyphen, and this is the, give me the value after the delimiter. So it will give me one to one to. Any questions? So the similar value is 466.98. So this much, so minus three yeah. um, I'll just move uh, on. So uh, between two delimiters is when I want the particular value to be refracted uh, between two particular delimiters, which are set. So if I have ABC hyphen uh, two brackets and I want the value from the brackets to be reflected, right? So I'll, st I'll put a start delimiter, I'll put an end delimiter. And whatever the value that we have in between will be reflected. Uh, again, you know, uh, this is uh, another example is what we are saying is start delimiter and end delimiter. But you will see uh, this is uh, uh, 
global modern services this is a, it starts here but it ends here right it ends in the first place so you have the values between the first two that you'll fetch it will it will give you the value from there uh, it will neglect so the first thing that he is getting is here it starts and here it ends so the value between this is, is reflected as part of the what delimiters here defined um, so first one is after our delimiter so if I'll define a value, let's say single space, as soon as, as part of the address, I receive the first single space, uh, you know, substring the text, you know, remove the text after the single space, only give me the text, which is available before the single space. So this is one example where we can pull out uh, uh, the fields which are uh, on the specific business needs. Um, another one is off before a delimiter so now i am uh, as per what we've discussed before delimiter right so anything which is uh, which is there before the delimiter will be will be uh, sent out so again on the single space thing uh, we'll will basically see it more in action when we go to the report but uh, any value let's say abc xyz is the address and if it's a space in between so any value which is before the space will be extracted out if i'll take after a delimiter so any value which is after the single space will be extracted out uh, this is how it it, it now functions where uh, you can define the criteria of the substring and how the values will be pulled into it And the delimiter is always uh, work to deliver, right? They can be only a certain set of things, right? Thank you. You can create your own delimiter as well. So you see this option of create calculated field. It so that means it also accepts delimiter, which is created by us. Thank you. Yeah. So if you if you are maybe you know work it doesn't give you uh, a dot, you know. Yeah. A dollar being a delimiter, right? It doesn't give you, but dollar is my delimiter to uh, fetch the value. So I can create a constant, the new text constant, right? What we have discussed, and you can pull, give it a value of dollar, and pull it as part of this delimiter. So it works that way as well. Thank you. Yeah. Between two delimiters is going to give you two new prompts of start delimiter and end delimiter. Because now we are looking at scenarios of specific uh, two characters, and we are we only want the values to be pulled upon when that delimiter reaches and when that delimiter ends. So when we are looking at values between two delimiters, that's when the start delimiter and end delimiter comes into play. Uh, so it, it also gives you an option to exclude results without end delimiters. If I'll check this, it will not give you results at all. It will send you a blank. Well, if I don't check this, this particular whole condition will be neglected if there is no end delimiter, right? If there are two, uh, let's say, brackets and the end bracket doesn't exist, it will give me the whole value after the first delimiter itself. In And if I'll check this, uh, it will give me a blank value because now I have making sure that uh, if there is no end delimited to it, don't give me any results at all. Fixed position is what you will see uh, being used a lot where we define the starting character position. So if I want the first 10 digit or first 10 characters to be shown, right? I can start, I can basically define a starting position and what is the character length? It's, it's, it should be a 10. Holding in progress. Uh, 10 length. It should be, you know, uh, should be of size 10. So starting character position we can define as one. So it starts at the value of one. And how long it goes? It goes till 10. But let's say if I if I don't want, I don't know what it is, right? I want whenever the text ends, uh, just just give me the value. But the starting position could be start at the character five. <laughs> Start at the character five, but give me the value until the whole text field is ended. Okay, uh, so we are on the substring text. Um, 
somehow I have lost connection to the tenant, but we can take a stop and a pause here because um, it, it's something that um, we can be doing practically when we go to a session tomorrow. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we will reply to them at the earliest.